Good morning, folks. We've got big stories to hit today. SDO performing another roll calibration and causing some image jitters. The top three stories today are spread throughout the show, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day looking like a junior varsity practice field. Tiny bright wannabe active regions, minor and small coronal hole patches. Again, looks just like 2010. You can see the elevated solar wind telemetry from the small coronal hole does remain, but scaling on the left for purple solar wind speed remains below 400 kilometers per second, means it is weaker than a weak stream. Max geomagnetic effect couldn't lift us out of the green calm conditions. Top quake of the last day struck Alaska, ringing in at 6.2, actually hit the watch map red alert star we posted to Twitter last night. Storm Gloria pounding the southwestern part of Europe, Spain and France have seen days of trouble as flooding, storm surges, and lots and lots of snow batter the region. Our first top story comes to cosmic rays. Indeed, we've now been at the modern cosmic ray maximum for about a year. Polar and equatorial stations are both showing our rise to levels likely not seen since the Maunder minimum, as the sun takes a dive out of the grand solar maximum of the 1900s. And folks, this is critical. Cosmic rays in blue do indeed move opposite to sunspots in yellow. And while sunspots aren't a bad way to gauge solar activity, it doesn't actually tell us how powerfully the sun is pounding out. Now while cycle 19, top left, was indeed the maximum sunspot count of the entire 400 year grand solar cycle, the CMEs, the solar flares, didn't push cosmic rays to their minimum until 1992, the lowest blue spike. This means that while the sunspot maximum was in the late 50s, it would be nearly 40 years until the solar forcing maximum occurred. And from there, we go to the 20 to 30 year lag, leaving us right now at the peak years of that forcing from the end of the last millennium. They have released the official catalog from the 2019 Ridgecrest earthquake sequence. More than 30,000 earthquakes struck in total. They peaked out at 6.4, and magnitude 7.1. Looking into the future, they identify numerous new fractures and propagation pathways of the pressure, implicating a motion of the fractures south and westward from the initial sequence genesis point. For those who don't know, I am a very big fan of the ET topic. Our Star Water series was meant to demonstrate how ubiquitous life's ingredients are found across the cosmos, and sentiments like this are starting to fly from the veterans of the field. And life may be much closer than we think, just not to mince words, Enceladus is habitable. Maybe not ideal for modern human civilization, but from the carbon dioxide to the complex chemical processes in the subsurface ocean, Saturn's icy moon has everything needed to conceal life from our notice today, deep beneath those South Pole jets. In the second top story today, a new paper in Nature is reframing their climate change story on a global basis. They found that ozone-destroying chemicals are responsible for half the Arctic warming, which tallies one-third of all global warming. This takes the major blame on carbon and fossil fuels and begins to pull back from it. This is a huge change as the carbon blame was everything, but there's more. This uses CMIP5 modeling and data, not CMIP6 with solar particle forcing. And since the polar region is where the particles penetrate the most at this planet, they have widely underestimated the effect of the sun on the Arctic. But furthermore, with Earth's weakening magnetic field, which is also not in climate models, some of the blame on human-destroyed ozone letting in more is actually extra penetration due to the shifting and weakening magnetic field of the planet. Lastly, I want to mention that if half the Arctic warming is a third of all global warming, there is a serious lopsided effect to the planet here that nobody seems to be mentioning. Something to keep an eye on here is the discovery that radioactivity inside the Earth has not ceased, and not ceased its effects on internal heating. But it also plays a role in the energy that produces earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and Earth's magnetic field, throwing a tiny wrench into the modern dynamo and interior models. And something to note, radioactive particles respond with higher activity when bombarded with cosmic rays, which does send the imagination running when that response is beneath our feet. Last but not least, hard to deny, this could be the most important cosmology paper in 2020. If you recall, 
The galactic rotation problem says there aren't enough stars and dust and gas to hold the outer galactic stars in their spiral shapes, and so they blame dark matter. You need all this extra mass and extra gravity to hold it all in. But let's review. The lost light of Hubble found tons of normal matter in the halos around the galaxies where dark matter should have been. Keck showed us how that material is co-rotating with the galaxies, helping in both mass and motion. And then they found this material is fed by spiraling filament currents from the cosmic web. So, what would be the worst possible thing for dark matter scientists to find around the Milky Way? Well, it would be that our observation bias from inside the forest here has them missing two-thirds of the matter in the circumgalactic medium. The circumgalactic medium is indeed that region where the dark matter halo was needed to account for the galactic dynamics. Well, if it's electromagnetic dusty plasma instead, this town ain't big enough for the both of them. Folks, we're just a few days away here from Kat's first book signing. Her children's books really are awesome, and I'm not just saying that because she's my wife and my CEO and my best friend. They really rock. Come see her and me as we'll both be at Barnes & Noble on Briargate in Colorado Springs this Saturday from 11 to 1. You can pick up her books, our hats, and our sweatshirts over at otf.cells.com. In the meantime, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.